Not being cast. I'm Alina, your host. Tom. Hello, everybody. It's been a minute. No, it's only Hope been... nobody forgot me. No, I don't think <laughs> anyone could forget about you. No, they can't. But it hasn't been that long, has it? No. It's only been like two episodes. Two, all right. Two, three episodes. Maybe it just feels like a lot longer. Oh, he missed well, us, where Trina. Were you? Trina. <laughs> Hi. Just out there terrorizing shit. Letting his wings spread. <laughs> we need we need to clip those bad boys. Be like, come back to reality, Tom. Slow your roll. <laughs> um, I'm Alina, your host. These are two of our famous guests that keep coming back, and they're just amazing. They're not guests. They're co-hosts. I have so many co-hosts. I love it. Yeah, I like that. Then we have our producer, Solomon. Oh, hello. What's up, Solomon? And Hi, Solomon How you doing? is doing, How you doing? How you doing? a great thing. He has the Dodger game on in the background. Mm. We're not watching it, though. Yeah. Excuse you? We're giving undivided attention. That's right. That's what I said. We need to. Undivided mm-hmm. attention. So our guests that are listening that may have never listened or never watched, Tom is huge about undivided attention and setting priorities. And so when we come to record, we need to be fully focused. Mm-hmm. That's right. However, we are in game three in Yankee Stadium at the Dodger game, and I will be watching that. I'm just saying. We got to win, even though Max Muncy is pissing me off. <laughs> he can't get on base to save his life, little chunky monkey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm still wearing down the pitchers. That is true. That is true. And he got us here. So him and Otani, because he can't do anything either. But uh, Yeah, they got us here. Yeah. Solomon made me see the brighter things. <gasps> oh, this picture right here, though, Banda. Woo! Mexican. I am a Latina for all you that are listening, and we support our peeps. Okay. Tom, are you ready? Ready. Let's do it. We have a topic in mind, but we've kind of been all over the place. Today, we got to drive here, the three of us together. <laughs> it was fun. Um, but mainly, Trina, you've been married how long? Uh, it'll be 10 years on New Year's but this you, year and 14. We've been you, together 14, 14 years. years. Okay. And do you mind asking how old you were at that time when you got when you first got with Mike? Uh, well, I'm 49, so... Not me not knowing how to do math. I was like, why are you looking at Tom? 14 years, 35, right? Yeah, I was going to say 34, 35. Okay. And then um, I'm single. And Tom, I'm saying you're single just in the sense that you don't live with somebody you're not married. That's what I'm saying. You're not single, single, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask is like when you meet somebody new, we bring into these our past issues. We bring in, unless you're fully healed, and I don't think anybody's ever fully healed because when you go into a relationship, it kind of, it'll trigger it and it'll make you heal. You'll go through some stuff. But do we, as women, Trina, need reassurance from men? Do we want reassurance from men? Do we get it? And then, Tom, for you, I guess my question would be, as a man, we assume that men don't need reassurance. And I think that what, I, what I've what i learned on this, what, year and a half it's been, Solomon, on this podcast? Yeah. That men are sensitive and in a good way, not crybaby men, not sissy lala men. <laughs> <laughs> not weak men. Not some weak ass oh men. <laughs> but even the strongest men, like they love to be loved. They need reassurance. They love to be happy. They love communication. Well, I don't think it's just men. I don't not think just men, men, but no, obviously but I, no women need. That's a what lot I'm of saying is I never thought that, men that. needed it. I've learned that in this year and a half. I thought men didn't need it. They were good. Oh, you were like you were like men are strong and they don't need us. Yes. To. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, I think they probably need it just as much as we do. I don't know necessarily a man needs it as often like as women need it, but I think it's like anything else. If you were running a successful business. You would need to know what you're doing is working and being successful. If so, you need to know, hey, if what I'm doing to my woman, do you like it? Am I am I exceeding your expectations in whatever areas, right? Mm-hmm. So all these things, because there's things she needs out of you, right? There's things that she expects out of you, right? 
And there's certain things. It's crazy, though. So speaking of expectations, speaking of that, a little bit off the subject a little bit, but we will hold our men accountable if you need it, right? If I need this, this, and that, but sometimes we don't hold even our own kid accountable. Like, he can get away with shit, but, but there are your men. Yeah. So, so anyways, but I don't want to get too much off that. So, but yeah, a man definitely... Uh, I'm sure to know that, hey, am I on the right track? Am I doing what, what you know, what you need from me? Am I being what you need me to be? Am I, you know? Um, what about the whole action speaks louder than words thing? Like, if you as a man are doing everything at the house you're supposed to, with the house, with the garage, with the plumbing, taking the trash out, like the mortgage is paid, the lights are paid. So like- a lot of things you're doing, you live by... You know, you could say as many times as you want, hey, I love you, but if you're not doing it by actions, it really means nothing, right? Yeah. But at the same time, does that mean, hey, because I did all that, you never need to hear me tell you I love you? I told you I love you last month, babe. Like, stop tripping. Yeah. Then <laughs> she'd be like, well, hey, wait a I- minute. Like, so just because I paid the, I paid this, I paid that, I went and filled your car tank up, I do all these nice things for you. I went and, you know, I took care of your mom, that she needed it, so that, and that made you happy. And so whatever it is, but does that mean that I don't, Go buy her flowers or go tell, baby, I love you, or or let her know. Or sometimes there, well, you know, you've kind of been quiet or you're, you're you're stressed out at work and I just don't know where your head's at. So, baby, like, do you love me? And you're like, yeah, baby, stop tripping, right? But they need to be reassured because you're going to go through these valleys and these ups and downs all the time. Mm-hmm. And you need to reassure each other at times. So does it need to be all the time? Maybe not. Maybe the men don't need it as much. I don't think I need it, but I need it, right? Mm -hmm. And independent, like we talked about the past traumas and where people are at, right? What they've dealt with. If somebody's never had that and always just been kind of knocked down, Mm -hmm. they need it. Yeah. They need to know that they're good with you, that they're secure with you, that all these things. So if no one's ever told you, man, I'm proud of you. You did a really good job. I love the way you do this. I love the way you treat me. I love the way you take care of this, this, and that. You're amazing. The way, you know, if you never tell that person and all they got all their life, their parents were just on them and like, hey, you, you know, why are you always fucking up, man? You never fucking do nothing good. Like, what's your fucking problem? Well, you're just like, fuck, man. So those people might need. And then on the flip side of that. But how are they supposed to know you need that if you don't? If well, I'm telling you, and you like, open up and tell them. Okay. But it's really difficult as a, more difficult as a man to do. Because first of all, a man doesn't want to feel like. They're like being soft. He's, bo- or these things. And then if he is, and you're telling him, hey, I shouldn't have to tell you that, right? I shouldn't have to, listen, I shouldn't have to tell you that. Um, you should be confident in yourself. You should know who you are. You should know by my actions. You should know everything that I, the way I treat you and how I take care. You should know who you are. Mm-hmm. so there's part of that that's true right that hey yeah, no matter extent. if your kids told you whether you did a good job like because it's been told to me and and, and it, this affects me big time with my yeah. kids and my upbringing and all that yeah. stuff with my kids tom you know what i just want you to know other people that see me regardless of that you've been a good dad right yeah. so some of it you just got to own and believe in yourself right yeah, yeah. so that is true to a point right it is very true to say hey you know what? You should just know these things and just know who you are and yeah. not not need it from anybody. Mm-hmm. So then that 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 creates another little But it's good to hear. But it's it that's why you hear. have that's why I think it's important but that if you surround yourself if you with put it out there and uplifting. If you put it out there and the people you know don't do it or they may make a comment or they may um or maybe they're not capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's capable of what we need. When we ask, hey, man, this is what I need. As a, mm-hmm. In my relationship, I need you to do this, man, once in a while. I, I want this in my relationship so that I could feel at my best. And then if I'm built up, right, then I'm going to be at my best. We talked about it when Marlene first said, hey, I didn't ever like to dance. I already felt bad about myself about dance. I don't the fuck how to dance. Man, you fucking dance great, Tom. I love the way you dance. Like, mm-hmm. like baby, you freaking, you yeah. know. Your vibe, you know everything. You're you're so smooth. Like, oh shit! All of a sudden, now, now, you feel what do you need, babe? I go through walls you for you. You think you're happy feet now, right? But so, but you build them up. But if you don't, right? If you don't do that, so that's your reassurance. That's the reassurance you needed. Is to tell you that you know you do know how to dance. You dance good. I like your vibe. You're like, 
or whatever. Yeah. So you need someone to uplift you and encourage you. Mm-hmm. Sure. So that's not another just- thing. Is is it reassurance? Because I feel like reassurance people look at that word like, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, but they're rolling their eyes, right? But uplifting is a great word to use. Yeah, because I'm I only want to be around people like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't expect it from other people, but in my relationship, um, I've learned that the only way that my husband is going to be able to f- pour into me is if I let him know that these are the things that I that make me feel good. Like it's not his job to make me feel secure in within myself, right? I have to do work on that myself, and then I need him to like you know do A, B, C, or D. But he's the only person that I can tell that to. I'm, I don't want it from any other man. Yeah. And I want to be the only person to give it to, to to be able to uplift him and encourage him. Is he going to get it from the outside world? Yes. There's going to be other women that are. You know what I'm saying? That it could. That's a danger zone. A real danger zone because if yeah. you're not doing it. Yeah. Right. If your significant other is not doing those things mm-hmm. to build you yeah. up, you're going to look, maybe that attention comes from, so you're not even looking for it, but they just come and bring it in. Hey man, you're, you're so good at work or you're so good at this or I, whatever it is. Or, and you know, when you're and not then, getting that attention or that uplifting or that reassurance at home, because you've been so stuck in a marriage for so long mm-hmm. or in a relationship for so long, they stop giving it. I think it's harder to give reassurance or uplifting when you've been together for so long, right? Because you fall into a pattern of just do this just and do that. Up, and every day and then somebody along the line comes and says, hey, you look good today. Well, like he said, there's that. I mean, I feel like if you're attentive enough, right, and you guys have boundaries set and you know what what he needs or what I need, then you're going to always have that. Not You don't need to have a guard up. When you're outside, you should just be able to like there are going to be people that gravitate gravitate to you for whatever reason. But you have to be strong enough in your relationship but and you be have, confident. You have enough. to be open to each other, though, too, when they do need those things. If your wife is say, hey, man, I, I need you to do this. Oh, yeah. No, and you have to be able to adapt. Sure. And even if I'm not that person, I was never raised that way. I never did whatever. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Like at yeah. the end of the day. What are the results, man? You yeah. better perform or not. So you got to try to learn how what is going to make her secure and happy yeah. and flourish and but don't be her you their best. Want to, aren't you with a woman or a man, like whoever your partner is, aren't you with them because you want to make them happy? Is you want to see them smile? I think every, want- everyone has different interpretations yeah, of yeah. their happiness. I I don't know. I, I went to hell and back and I feel like now where I'm at, I'm going to, I'm very adamant about how strongly I think it is important for my for me and my husband to keep God at the center of our marriage. We're we're not going to survive without without him. And and he knows that and I know that and I I think that be like having to go outside, <laughs> you know what I mean, and and be confident in who my man is whether he's there or not. I we mean you know, there mentally, emotionally, physically, I have to be confident in who we are together. Mm-hmm. And like, if I'm if I'm gone for a few days, I'm not afraid of what I'm going to come home to, or if he's, sure. you know, stepped out on me. If I met somebody today and I was dating him, and all of a sudden he every day was like, "You're beautiful. I missed you." Hard. I'd be like, "Whoa, that's like <laughs> like love bombing." Too I'd much. Be, yeah, I'd be like. But I've been you like You don't like that. to be smothered. No, and I've been like that my whole life. So I as need soon to as the guy smothered. gets attached, I like <laughs> run. But I I but I think everything that I've gone through that I've appreciated being alone and living alone and and not having a person in my bed in mm-hmm. my everyday life all these years mm-hmm. that I think now I keep telling myself like I would want to be with him. I'd want to make him happy. If that's what he wanted, then I would be okay with it today. But there's a part of me that's like I hear my friends are like, oh, I met this guy. We're going here. We're doing this. Oh, my God. Look at this. I was like, damn, he already told you he loved you. It's been like three weeks. She's like, yeah, girl. And I'm like, uh, that's soon. Like, don't you think that's soon? Like, so for me, I feel like I don't want to be loved bombed. So where's the difference between being loved bombed and being reassured? I want to be all the things that have to do with love. Love, love bomb <laughs> me all you want, Michael John. <laughs> there, you know what? There's times when I feel like... um. Well, you didn't tell me that I looked good, right? I think I I think he looks good. I tell him he looks good all the time. Yeah. My man looks good. 
But I don't need him yeah. to tell me that I look good. Yeah, but love bombing, like you're, you're saying, that's like a thing that's like every day, all the time, every move, every, you know, no, you might be told, you know, once a month, like, hey, babe, you're just I did tease my or, husband. You know, right? I tease my husband and say, do you love me? Yeah. I know he oh. loves me, but I want to hear it. You still want to yeah. hear it? I want to hear exactly. it. Exactly. I, why do I text my husband all the time? Because so then I why, like to let why him know. Why would the other person tell you? I'm a big teaser, right? Too. So you're like, because you want to hear it, right? Yeah. So why would the other person say, well, you don't need to. I, I just, by my actions, show you. Well, no, he well, said, no, I you know hear I love too. you. You know I love you. Yeah. No, I do know that he loves me, and he loves me the way that he wants to love me, and I love him the way that I know how to love him. He loves me in different ways. But you want to hear it sometimes, too. Yeah. Yeah. Even if he texts me that he loves me, I... You know, or sometimes I'll call him and say, and I know he's at work and he's busy and, I, and he'll say, hey, hey. And I'm like, are you busy? I don't want him to tell me that he's busy. I want him to say, what, what do you need? What What do you need? What do you need? Yeah. What, what, I'm never what's going too busy on? Busy for you. Right. <laughs> Has it, in right. all the years that you have been married when you first yeah. met him, because you talked about how he wasn't affectionate, right? Yeah. So you first met him compared to now. Has he, does he speak Trina now? He does speak Trina, but Trina likes Michael to, be speak Trina every day, twenty four seven. <laughs> so I can throw myself at my man, hug him, smother him, and then he's like, okay. like, <laughs> and then I tell him, you you should want me to be all up on you. So I sound like Mike, but I don't want to be him today. Like I was him ten years ago. Eight, like like even my sister's like, you date all these weird guys. You don't date. <laughs> And I said, it's because I know that there's no consistency. I know it's not going to last. Does that make sense? So you I just don't, don't try. You, I, I don't you have trust issues. You're like, I, do. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I was like, I've dated guys that I know there's no future in the sense, if that makes sense. How do you know just right off the bat? Oh, because I know. Well, because one, I didn't, I never had this thing until Seth and Loran were both out of the house. Was I going to get married and live with the guy? Which is going to be me, the guy, and their dogs. Well, Obviously, that's not the case. So when I dated, I made it pretty clear, like, not getting married, not having ki any more kids. I was done after two. Not moving in together. So I dated guys that I guess if they loved bomb me or like, I missed you. How are you sexy? Oh, God. Like, I was not sexy last night when we went on a date. I was in hoodie and sweats and no makeup. That is not sexy. Like, but I now I look back and I feel really bad. Like, I even think back about, like, baby daddy. Like, I will say this, my apologies to him for that part of our relationship. You're, like, wait, what? You're apologizing to him? <laughs> like, like, he did try to be like, you look cute. And I'd be like, I'm going to work. Like, what? Like, he would try to be that. And I didn't, I didn't need it. I didn't want it. Like, not even from him. Like, I was too busy raising kids to deal with, like, Oh my God. Yeah, so I can yeah, see. Yeah, man, I can see. Fuck. That was going to not go well. That was our personal oh. relationship. Like, you either like, want, you, oh, he doesn't text me enough, or he doesn't tell me that he loves me. He doesn't tell me that I'm beautiful. Too much. Or it's too much. Now, if I dated a guy and we, I feel, and I'm going to be so brutally You're going to embrace it. Yeah, no, no. I think today that if I started dating Pablo and Pablo woke up at eight in the morning and didn't text me till three, I would be like, are you mad Oh, no. Me? See, that's not. Are we okay? Like, what did you do? If you're do? with like, somebody, you should be telling them good morning. But did, we didn't do that in the no? past before we had text messaging. Mom, why'd you make your face at me like that? No? <laughs> so it's I'm saying. Not good morning, beautiful. Have a good day. Wait, you don't text good morning, mm -hmm. gorgeous? Yeah, Why'd you look at me like Why, that? Yeah, you look like you're not, you're like you're, you're lying. Like, you look no. like you, you disagreed. Uh, no, I didn't say that. I need to call Marlene. I want to know if you I know. Can we do inside callers <laughs> one day? <laughs> like, we need a lifeline oh, here. I yes. Do I, I do that. I text her. Do you every, text her good night? Does she text you? Good morning. Every, handsome. Yeah, have a good day. If I don't text her. Be safe. If I don't text her, like if whatever, I'm picking up a job or something like that, she might text me first. So you morning, wake up, text her shower, leave the house, go to the hall, you pick up a job at our union hall, and you haven't texted her yet? Well, for sometimes because she's a late sleeper. She's a oh. late night person, right? So I don't want to be that thing chiming in her ear knowing that she's going to sleep up, but get up at 8 o'clock anyway. If That's the one. best type of chime. It, yeah. Anyway. Well, it is, but I'm just saying that you can get that same chime at 7.50. When you know in 10 minutes you're going to get up instead of me mm -hmm. at 6 in the morning. Oh, well, <laughs> I was laying down morning. right here. You know what I mean? Like, 
I still I text my husband when I'm up at 5.30. And I, I'm not that I do, haven't done there. it. It's not that I haven't. You know, in the morning, I'll get up and I'll be, you know, I might text her. I think, but I might do it a little bit later when yeah. it's closer like to 8 because I know that's her routine, you know. Okay. If I, I woke up and didn't to... have a text message from him, I, I think I would text him, you hate me. You don't love me anymore, huh? No, I would. Oh, yeah, I hear that. I I hear that. I would totally (laughs) be like. If my husband don't text me and he's gone all day, and when he gets home, I'm like, is your phone broken? Yeah, like, I think that. Did you talk to anybody today? Yeah, but we didn't talk. Text him then? I text my husband when I wake up, and he lives with, we live together. So, so, (laughs) so you're doing it. So he's in the other room. So you're not the one. I give him a kiss when I wake up, say good morning. I'm not the one saying that, hey, you didn't. Call me when you got off of work or you didn't text me or you didn't no. whatever um, because you would you would do it then. Hey, I didn't hear from you. What's but, going on? But see, that's what I like to do. That's right. how that's what Trina that's likes to do. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm teasing him when I'm like, oh, you didn't call me today or whatever the case may be. I call him and I say, I just wanted to say hi. I wanted to hear your voice. Have a good day. If Bye. my husband didn't text me or call me all day at work and I was irritated at how which I would be, but walked in with the bean and cheese burritos from Pronto's, I all would be forgiven. Okay, I'd now we like, know that you like bean and cheese burritos. I would be like, okay, That's you're good. Do, bean and cheese. Yeah, I would be like, we're good. I oh, mean, you're probably not going to get now. sex that night, but I, I'm not going to be a bitch. Like, we'll be because cool. Because he didn't bring you a burrito? No, because you didn't text me all day. So thank you for that. I'll be nice the rest of the night. There's dinner you can eat, but don't think you're getting sex. You didn't text me all day. Who are you having sex with? Sex is a reward? Oh. No. no. Damn, <laughs> see? There you go. Got her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. We are golden over so here. You know, it you is know a who reward. She, who it she is. thinks the princess is Pablo. Like, I'm the treat. <laughs> Pablo. Yeah. First of Just all, just know you better bring the burritos and text her. All I'm uh, saying is, uh, mm, I think that I always felt when we were younger, I don't want to call him first, or I don't want to seem too anxious or too needy, right? And then as texting came along, but I'll have sex with him. I. Uh, <laughs> I hope to God there's some kids in my family that is not watching this one today. <laughs> um, as an adult, I'm referring to as an adult. Well, as I got older, like I then like the text messaging, it was like, okay, I sent that text message. And there was moments where it was like, okay, should I text? No, I don't want to do this or no. But it's like what Tom said, it's that game that you play and then you realize that it affects the relationship. Right. So now at my age, I ain't got more time I'm to play I'm not going to drag it out of I'm you. Not, I'm, I'm not going to force you to text me back. But then how do you know what that person was doing? How do you know that they weren't just so slammed that they were out of their brain? That You, you don't know. Like, hey, your mom, be straight up, man. I, I've seen, my mom was in the hospital. I had to rush her to the hospital. I was there all freaking day. Like, life happens. Let you me tell you. You wouldn't call like, her on the way to the hospital and say, my mom's on the way to the hospital. I got to go meet her there? Right now, if your mom was bleeding all over the fucking You're not going to be on your phone. Your fucking shit was worrying about getting her fit. Yeah. If my your son mom- is shot. And all, you don't give a fuck about it. it don't, that don't matter, yeah. man. Really does. And I, I know it sounds like, oh, I would bullshit. What matters is when I get back too late, babe, this is what was going on. So there's shit that life just happens, man, that you don't get all like, hey, I got to be right. And if I have to, then there's a problem when it's like that. Like if, if everybody's got to be like, I you're the first one that I had. Nah, man. Like I just got in a fucking accident. I'm on way. I don't know. I'm calling my insurance company for. I'm not gonna. I don't need to call you right away. Like to tell you. Have you seen like, that right away? Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm trying to use I'm example. Like looking at him and I'm like, okay, Uncle like, Tom. Oh, I'm like, fucking, <laughs> all right, you're have you got be, in a car oh, accident? Man. That's it. Just a little boo. Yeah. You better call me. There's a meme and it says the guy texts oh. his wife and says, "Babe, I got in a car girl. accident. Oh. My leg's broken. Barbara's taking me to the hospital." And she goes, "Who the fuck's Barbara? Like, <laughs> not are you okay? Is your leg okay?" Wait, if you, if you get in a minor car accident and you can't call her, babe, I just got an accident. A minor car accident. It do, you don't know. You don't know what people are, what they got going on and, and the emergency and how fast something had to react to whatever yeah. it is. Because I've been in situations like that and I really couldn't like, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not focused on that. I'm, yeah. I'm up on the ship. The guy just smashed his arm. I'm trying to get him down from to the fucking ship. Well, that I don't okay, have that's to fucking different. tell nobody. That's different. That's that different. has nothing to do with well, you. I'm just, but I'm, if my husband is in an accident. I'm using an example. Okay. okay I'm using an example. I'm <laughs> trying like to create a picture. So everybody acts like, no, you should. No. There's circumstances in life that no, you don't. No, no, I'm not disagreeing with you if you're in an accident or you're taking someone to the hospital. Whatever, like, whatever but to be mean. honest, the first person I want to hear or As talk a, to when I'm going through you? something, yeah, in a 
from my own Once you view, fix that is my situation husband. where you could calm your breath in order to do it and no, clear off whatever No, because he might need to calm our breath. in general, when my grandpa died, I, Michael was the first person I called. I needed to hear his voice. I needed to hear him tell me that he's there for me and that he loves me and that it's it's going to be okay. Yeah. I meant like that. Like I, That's the voice I want to hear. I get that too, but I'm just saying, you got shit going on right that then in that time. It's not that. But it's do you think it's you and point. your whole undivided attention thing? So like, you're in a car accident, you're focused on just that. Nothing else can like ever. Well, I'll be honest that. with you. I've on the way home always will call Marlene and be like, "Hey, just got out," and I'll forget everything that I was supposed to do, and I'll go. I was going to stop off here, pay this yeah. bill, do whatever, and I'm sidetracked. And so I like to, for me, I'm a person that give my undivided attention and do the job great. What I watch a lot of people do is try to do two, three th things, and they kind of suck at all three of them. You know, they 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 may do partials or they give undivided attention. And Who are you hanging out with? <laughs> Let me tell you what. Not just hanging. I'm talking about a general. I'm telling you, I can multitask. Oh, hold on. No. So today, before we got here, because we're doing my daughter's birthday tomorrow, I had to make cupcake. Mashed potatoes. My grandma was on the couch before the caregiver came. The cupcakes are good, by the way. Thank you. I had to get her up and take her to the bathroom because she had to go to the bathroom, right? Sit her back down. Finish doing a lot with the dogs. Like, I'm not sure who you hang out with, but he just said my cupcakes are bomb. My mashed potatoes will be bomb. And tomorrow I'll make fried chicken. You'll forget other shit, though, what's going on because of during that time. I, I can't. I'm not in a place where I, I can't forget grandma yeah, to go I to the think bathroom. We, well, there's certain things you might not forget, but there's going to be other things you are. And it's like, oh, shit. And I was trying to watch whatever. the beginning of the Dodger game. And trying to put my makeup on. You could tell me whatever you want. Maybe say. a better word than forget bathroom. is deprioritize. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say that again, Solomon. So maybe... Uh, better than forget, it's the word is deprioritize. You're going to put certain things at the bottom of the list. Yeah, the laundry didn't get thrown into the dryer before I came. It should have been, and I forgot to do that. Damn, so you're right. Yeah. Forgot to throw the laundry in the way. But. Some things you just got to do sis systematically, and that's why it's done that but way. But do you think it's that it's men responsible, but don't... doing that way. Like, hey, I need to do my grandma first before this go. You know, that, again, is put off because grandma needs to be changed because she's going to get a rash if I don't do this one on time. Yeah. I'm not going to make the phone call. I'll call you when I'm done because I don't want her to get in a rash. It's like everything goes in line depending on what else has to be accomplished. You yeah. know what I mean? And what yeah. is that gonna is that gonna mess you up that I don't I called you in 20 minutes versus I called you right now? No. So you, do you just think have that to you just have to do can't things. multitask like women? No. Probably not. Whoa. I think women can multitask better, but I don't think that they really do it all that successful. As we get older, it's I will say this. As we get older. I always feel like I'm perfectly organized and I'm perfectly have everything in control. And you're right. No, I don't. Something. But I see. Yeah, I see them. Up. Yes, I see what's happening. And then that undivided attention is not given there because, oh, Tom, I can't because I got. Because okay, well then get back to me in three hours when you got some time. <laughs> Don't try to do it when you're trying to do everything else and you're cutting me off in a conversation. You're cutting, and then you're getting back to me, and then you're trying to, and then where were we at? You don't even remember what I just told you? You are the only person on this earth, when I tell people I'll call you back or I see a text, I'm like, I'll text them later. I'll... When it comes to Tom, he is the only person. I won't answer that phone if I cannot talk for, for however long I think we need to talk, and I will send a text. I will call you back, and I will call him back. Because if I don't and I tell him I will, oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. So I know that you are, but I also know you're very. Because he needs reassurance. No, I don't think you need reassurance. <laughs> well, you don't. Well, if you got other things going on, you're valuing. Your value is not. I much, value right? his time. So if if you sense? got if something else is super succeeding you, obviously I'm down here on the on. You're not a priority. Yeah, I'm not a priority. It's what you need, what you got going on right now. And some of the stuff doesn't need to be a try. It could be talking to you about whatever a podcast with some. Dumb shit that was going on. What? So probably doesn't need to be right. But there's times maybe you're talking about something serious. <laughs> I wanted to. Say you're it talking works about so bad. your fucking how you want to fucking blow your head off because your kids don't fucking have nothing to do with you in your life. That's a motherfucking serious topic. You need to drop what the fuck you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Well, so that's... so there's serious shit. Like so there's serious times. So whatever the case may be, right, with people. So you have to adjust accordingly. And guess what? That other person. If I'm in the middle of that conversation, that's that serious. That other person, they don't. I don't need to call them right now. 
My yeah. friends call me and they're they're fucking feeling this way and and it's a bad situation. And so you know what? I'll get back to you and talk to you. And then I should be able to get back to you and tell you, look, babe. I was talking to my friend. Well, I'm not important. I'm not first, and I'm not this. Hey, I was talking to my friend. You know, this is what he's going through. Like, and then you'd be able to tell him. I don't need to friggin' compete with telling you mm -hmm. that was serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it could be that, right? Yeah. And then we say that, like, oh no, Tom, like you should be there for. And then you go and you try to make an, uh, an, an, oh no, you mean you never could have that time to? No, you should. There's times that shit, that other shit, like there was shit with my mom, like her insurance. I had to, it was a timely thing. I had to get her the thing. She was there at the hospital, things she needed, pay for her shit. I'm not, I don't got time to like, it might take me 30 minutes. You better yeah. just wait. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, hey. well, that's part of being understanding, right? But what happens is on the other end, they get like a little other. bit like, you know, just people like, and they think you didn't even or miscommunication yeah you know or sometimes you know and, and on my side like i i've known that hey fuck it's kind of taking a little long maybe i should just text her real quick and say babe i'm doing this real quick i'll text you right now instead of waiting that 30 minutes and like hey you couldn't even have sent a text you know and you're like fuck i was gonna do it right. i just jumped in the shower you know, I was just getting all my stuff ready for tomorrow and whatever. And Larry came in. He was asking me if I could pick up some groceries for the kids tomorrow for their lunches. Whatever it is, you're trying to give your undivided attention to that and not be with my, my roommate that's finally, you know, I've been at my girls all week long. And now the one day I'm there and then looking on my text back and forth and I can't give you 10 seconds, you know, mm -hmm. at time. But do just, you Do you like it when she tells you, like, Hey, you look good today. Like, hey, you look handsome, or hey, you look cute, or like, I missed you. Like, to your when you see your face, do you need the reassurance in your face per se against the uh, reassurance or the uplifting in via text? Before he answers that, you asked him, does he like it or does he need it? Kind of both. Well, I guess. that's two different things, though. So, do you need it and do you like it? When she tells me I'm handsome or she tells me things like that in person or in text, I like it. I don't know if some of that, if I really need some of that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but in the relationship, like there's, there's things that I feel I need. I need to know where I'm at. You know, I need mm -hmm. to know how things are. Like okay. I need to. But how do you, how do you, well, without having to get into your, like your relationship with uh, Marlene, but how do you know? What do you mean? Like by her actions, by yeah. Like how, how I am or how I'm, how I'm doing. And like, stuff how like is that. she supposed to know that she's doing those things if for you? That right you now, if I just had this conversation already, if I already told you. Okay. Right. If I yeah. tell you like, Hey. So these are know, mental. How, notes. Yeah. I mean, this is things that have been yeah. in discussion, right? right? It's not something like, Hey, I expect you to mind read me. Like, no, you know what? This is what I like to hear. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's crazy because in some things you don't really want to be like. It's like this. If you were like, hey, do you think that I'm handsome? <laughs> I don't need to fucking tell you like. Right. Because now she's going to say, well, yeah. Right. But that may be a lie, but she's not going to freaking. So you, you. I mean, I guess since you're asking me. <laughs> right. So it's not like I, I, there's certain things I shouldn't have to like. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. To, well, I, would, out of I you, wouldn't right? be with you if you weren't handsome. Like, Girl. That's what I... Yeah, but then, okay. Okay, then to that, like... I'd be like, well, duh. Was I the, am I the handsomest man you've been with? No. Because then you'd be like, okay, well, you know what I mean? Like, you know, well, I was with those other guys. that you know, Probably they were handsome, too. So, like, so obviously, because you just said, I, you wouldn't be with me. Well, then you were with them. So where... Wait, you, you would never ask that, would you? No, but you're, you're asking questions. You're... you're, 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 you're you're going down lines yeah, that I'm yeah, trying yeah. to say to, you know, okay. like, for instance, you know, you might tell, baby, you're the most amazingest woman I've ever met in my life, right? Oh. You just let them know it. Yeah. You could have did that to me. Yeah. yeah. And said, you're the most handsomest, most, you know, best man I've ever met in my life, yeah. right? And then you already put me above everybody else yeah. without me asking you to put me above everybody else. But I don't right? think that You don't already feel that way, though? See, and it goes back to us thinking that yes, men, sometimes. Okay. men don't need that. Because you, you, yeah, men, sometimes, right? Okay. I, I might be that, 
But that doesn't mean out of your eyes I'm bad. You know what I mean? What the oh, fuck? It's kind to tell Bill you. Bill collector trying to freaking... <laughs> Somebody my, to turn my wife's car, it's under my name. And they Shh. Freaking, Stop! I don't, I don't care. I'm telling you, fuck. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, we need a safe word. I'm just going to like. <laughs> yeah. But well, what I'm it. saying is there's things like, man, I shouldn't have to get like, oh, I got to tell you exactly. Like, you know what? You should just. Yeah. You know what? Like, so that you feel like you're walking around like, you know what? The other night when you took me out, that was the most amazing thing. I never experienced nothing like that in my yeah. life. You're so, the way you're so gentle, so touch me. You this, you that. Like, I can't believe I'm so lucky to have a man. I've never had it. And you just say it. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't need to friggin'. Now, now I know. Mm-hmm. where because just like some people don't need reassurance from n- nobody that matters mm-hmm. i don't need to be tell, mm-hmm. told hey you're a good looking well you don't mean nothing to me mm-hmm. yeah sorry it's but sweet. if my kids told me you're a good dad you're this you're that that matters yeah if my fucking if my dad told me hey i'm proud of you son you're freaking great uh, man you turned into a great man that matters yes. if my woman says you're the most amazing man to me i've never been i'm so lucky to be able to have you i've never had that in my life that matters Mm -hmm. right so i don't have to pry it out of you yeah i shouldn't have to right right? it should be given to me and me already know like because in some people well you don't need that you shouldn't you just know that Mm -hmm. well i could but then i'll walk around never needing your reassurance then i'm good well, how but come you don't, how come you, but it's a little bit of a wall that will put, be put up with that man to be like, you know what? I'm hard. I'm a man. I don't need that shit. Yeah. And then you're wondering, but I'm not going to talk to you again about my reassurance because I already got kind of maybe, well, you should just know. Okay. Well then why would I bring it up again? Right. Yeah. You're why like one I and do done. I already things? said it. Kind of. And in a way, kind of like, it's hard for a man already to show that maybe he needs that. Mm-hmm. And then you bagged on it a little bit or you. Some people, well, you know, if you're, it wasn't a compliment that you did about it, right? Yeah. It wasn't an uplifting spot yeah. that you didn't put him in to be like, you know what, man? Hey, I, I, I think my man should just know this already. And you know what? He is amazing. But you know what? That's what he asked for. That's what he needs. So, you know what? I need to just take that in. Whether I need that or I understand him, let me just do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even if you can't do it 100%, let me attempt to go down that road because I'm maybe not that kind of person. I'm maybe not good with words. I'm maybe not this and that. But you need to try to adapt in some way or somewhere to make that person know they're hearing me. You yeah. Know? Yep. So. And we, I think that's why I asked earlier, like the second time around that we're dating later in life. Do we need it more so now than we ever did? Because I know that like growing up for me, men didn't have talk about emotions or feelings or need all that from women, you know? Women have always been categorized as we're needy, emotional women. We need to be told we're lovely and beautiful and we need flowers, right? And men always were hardcore and didn't need that. But over the course of the years, as men became more open and more expressive, now I see it. So now that you're dating Marlene later in life, do you need it more? I guess my question, when Solomon said, did I say want it or need it? Do you want it or slash need it now more than ever? I don't know if it was now more than ever. I don't know. I'm sure I needed it all back then. Probably if I would have had it, I would have never been out of my divorce. Yeah. I would have never had a divorce, right? Never been going through a separation. But um, but it's really a tough thing for a man because then it looks, a man looks weak and he looks yeah. needy mm-hmm. and they don't yeah. even want to do that. Like, I don't even want to tell you that. So now we talk about it and like, Tom, why are you going to like, why wouldn't you gonna communicate? Because especially if I tell you and then it's told to me like, you're being ridiculous. You should just know the way I feel. And, you, and then you're like, okay. That's the worst. But, and I I'm think not, that Why would I bring from, it up? I feel kind of lame now. Yeah. Like, I already feel, if you're already feeling like you not 100%, yeah. or yeah. you're not feeling like confident about a certain thing or certain areas kind of rubbing you, and you're just like, you should just be like, dun, 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 you know, all the time, Mr. Freaking Confident Man and everything you do. And then yeah. like, so now I'm being vulnerable with you a little bit. And it's kind of like, I, you don't even want to do that then. Yeah. You know, it's like, you yeah. know what, man, just suck it up, Tom. Like she said, you know who you are, know what you bring, know all these freaking things, and then just roll with that. And, and I think a lot that. of women are but then, guilty then, of then that. But then that man will become calloused and rigid a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Like, maybe not 100%, like, but a little, and then a little less more open, a little less to talk. 
So it's, I think sometimes you got to be sensitive to freaking what people are trying to say during, yeah. the, especially if a man, like a boy, a friend of mine going through some shit and he's on verge of shit like that. Like I need to be sensitive during that time. What he yeah. says, I don't fucking go crack off some fucking jokes. Yeah. I'll go fucking be all the, you know, no, this is a, he's trying to open up, trying to tell you what he says. And now you need to adapt to that and give him that undivided tent, that time, uh, you know? Yeah. That's one of the worst things a woman can say to a man who's being vulnerable is you're being too sensitive. But I think it comes from the whole stigma of, of that's how we grew up with that gen our our age, that generation. Men didn't express their I know coming from a Mexican household, um, more so on actually even my grandpa here, but both my grandparents. Like I've said it before in the other podcast, like Seth's dad said, you know, your grandpa's ruined you. You expect men to be hard. And everything you're saying right now is what I was completely guilty about being with my son's father is like, I, if he ever got expressive or emotional, I was that woman that was like, oh my God. Laugh at him and think Yeah. Like, because to me, men don't have emotions. Men don't show emotions. Men go to work. And he said that he goes, you think men are supposed to go to work and pay their bills and be home and that's it. And I was like, well, duh. That's what I was raised on, right? Mm -hmm. Like, my grandparents never left. They were always there. They stayed married. They looked happy to me. Now, were they? I don't know, because I wasn't in their marriages, right? But they were all married until their significant other or my two grandparents in Mexico passed away. But men are hardcore. Men don't have emotions. Men go to work. They pay their bills. They come home to their kids. You know, there's the whole thing that men drink. The Mexican men drink on Friday night. They do whatever on Saturday, drink Saturday night, mow their lawn on Sunday, and then they go to work on Monday. Now I wonder, were they drinking so much because they were holding sure. in all those emotions, For right? For sure. So now we we don't want our kids to be like that. So now we're breaking generational curses. Now we're the trauma, and we're being more expressive, and we're talking to our kids more. And we like I want my son to be able to be communicated, communicative with whoever he's with, right? Mm -hmm. So when he talks, I listen. However... I've gotten better over the years, but when guys talk and they talk, I'm guilty of what you're saying. That's why I'm asking you this so that when I do get with somebody, I'll be able to understand mm -hmm. because I will be like, oh my God, he's literally crying because we got in a fight. Oh, wow. He's like, what is wrong with this guy? And then sure enough, I will find a reason to break up with him in the next week because you literally he was crying. Yes. But then a lot you of want, but then women want men that are emotional. Not maybe crying sensitive. about that. Maybe he's in it's other shit. Make boys out. cry. No. <laughs> Maybe it was the wrong. Tears of joy. Make sure it was the wrong. I I'm just watching. So like the whole thing you you see all these things. It's just watching my 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 buddy and like his son and the way he reassures him and you know makes him like son. Wow, you're a great job. Like it lifts this kid up, and then he feels like he can do anything. Like mm -hmm. I'm good at spelling. I'm good at this. Yeah. Like I'm and he, and you just watch him flourish. Like. Where a lot of dads, too, back then, hey, they just go to work. They do their thing. Yeah. They don't, hey, mijo, hey, I love you. I'm proud of you, son. Like, no, maybe those words were never said. But yeah. now you watch it, and you see sometimes they are. And you're like, man, look at how this person, this kid, is just this confidence level and who he is and what he's about. Like, man, that's that's really, like, pump. and that's cool, man. And you see that love, like, you know. Well, you said it earlier. It It's it's who, who it's coming from it, that it matters the most, right? It's yes. the people that you want to hear you want to hear it from right. is the, are the ones that are going to so, make it matter. Yeah. Well, you see more dads today. My buddy told me the other day he was going with his daughter to a doctor's appointment. And I laughed like, what the, f like what? Because you see more dads today going to dentist appointments, to doctor's appointments. You see more dads today going to the kids' school conferences, the school functions, whatever. You didn't have that years ago. Remember, it was always just the moms that went to the doctor's appointments or the dentist appointments or the moms went to the PTAs. Or the mom went to the school. You see dads. Well, the dads today. were at work. Yes. And they're still at work. But now you'll see a dad's they're not going to take a take time a off. off of, or... Yes. Because I'm not doing that. That's your job. And in a sense, okay, I get it. But you see it more now. And you see the difference in the kids now when mom and dad are there. Or maybe mom mm -hmm. couldn't come this way because she couldn't get the day off work. So instead of no parent being there, now the dad goes. Right? Sure. You would have never saw that years ago. So now Tom and our generation beneath us now they're being more involved with their kids so they're being like larry where they're more expressive they teach their kids there's that saying if you tell a kid he's bad he's going to be bad right mm -hmm. you tell a, you teach you tell a kid you love them then they're going to learn love and i feel like our generation is it's okay to be reassured now i'm realizing it now it's okay when the person i'm with is like hey i missed you today like what like we didn't talk today and i'm like not like oh my god did we have to talk all day like now i understand 
But I think being single and not living with somebody, not having someone at home in my bed and waking up in the morning with somebody, I'm realizing like, damn, like, okay, now I will appreciate the next man that comes in. Mm -hmm. And I won't laugh or shut him down. (laughs) Wow. Well, it's good. I mean, so I say. That's why we do these podcasts so we can all expand our thinking. I think, though, that if, if, if it was a different man... Tell that's been on here with me for what you've been here on here almost over a year yeah, and something yeah. right and and watching your and everything you've gone through and listening to you and the man that you are like if you need to be reassured or want to be reassured i feel like well damn like it's a normal it's okay it's a normal thing it doesn't mean you're weak you know no. where before i was i used to think that that meant you were weak like well because you like to be told you like to be whether you're in a relationship or not, you like to be reassured of things, right? Good things, positive things. At work, yes, because I want to know I'm doing good at work, right? right? Like I want to make sure I'm doing. Even if your daughter was like my kids, oh, that's my number one thing. And my daughter more so than Seth, and this is why I fucked up with her a lot in the beginning, right? I was 16 and pregnant. Like, how did I know how to raise this child, right? So the fact that my daughter even wants to still be in my life, the fact that she still wants me around her all the time, we talk every day. Mm -hmm. Like, Well, you grew up together. Yeah. So for me, it's like the fact that when she calls me, love you, mom. Um, The other day was her birthday and she sent me this cute text and it was was her birthday, but she sent me the text, right? That is my reassurance that I definitely need. I need to know that whatever I messed up, I'm still able to fix it. Not fix it because you can't fix what you messed up, but I can do better. Mm -hmm. I could... Do better for her, so there, I do the better. So there's times, too, depending on where you're at, that you're not getting that reassurance from anybody else. So maybe you're, like I, I said, from my kids, I don't get it at all, right? From my ex, obviously, I never did a good job in their mind, right? But yeah, you wanted to be with me for all these many years, like something was working. But so if you never, you know, you never got that, at least if, man, the woman you were with. Well, how long were you married? Well, it's, I mean, the divorce is not totally final. But oh. It's 27 and a half years. That's three out, Solomon. Bottom and of the nine. 27 and a half years. Oh, did he just hit a home run? Yeah. I thought he caught it. I'm <laughs> caught it. I'm sorry, Tom. So, four to two. Okay. So, finish. Go on. What were you asking me? In those 27 years, wait, am I allowed to ask this? Because you're still going through your, your. I don't know. Yes, whatever you want. Oh. Like, you didn't feel. Like you got reassurance, but then you didn't need it. No, I was just bowling through everything. And I just like was like whatever I thought and was just like, you know, doing Mm -hmm. a good job. And I I just reassured myself, right? Pretty You're on go mode and just. I just on go mode and just doing my thing, you know. And later now as I'm in, because of it's really affecting me with my kids. What do you mean you didn't think I did a, I thought it was. Like, not there for you guys, and I didn't think I did a great job, and mm. this and that. So now it's like, I look back and I'm like, and I just realized it the other day, where did that start from? Where did I, why did I start feeling like that? Why did yeah. I feel a little bit uneasy about shit? And then I'm like, oh, well, my dad was not an affectionate guy. My dad never said, I love you. Yeah. You know, my dad didn't say, I love you until I already had my kids, and I, and I told my dad on a trip one time, I remember you told hey, us. dad, no, you never like, but my mom, my grandma was not that lady. She never did that to him either. So he never got taught that. So mm-hmm. he was, so for him, it was like, you know, and for some people, oh, I'm not an affectionate person. I'm not this, I'm not that. Like, I just don't know how to do that. Well, but you know what? At the end of that trip, when my dad got out of the car, my dad said, hey, son, I love you. Right? So he made an attempt, yep. even though he didn't know how to do it. Yeah. He still went down that road to say, you know, I'm going to learn how to be right. like yeah. that. Because so, you told him. Because I told him. Yeah. So, like, the, don't don't just use the excuse, I'm not that person. I'm not, a, you know, yeah. I'm an affectionate person. So, well, you, you better try to, like, start getting there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you know, so whatever. Maybe it not be to the 100 degrees, but, uh, you know, at least you made a 50%. Okay, well, yeah. cool. Right? But, um, yeah, coming from that, I was like, fuck, man. You know, talking with my roommate, and I was like, like tripping out on, like, where, where does this shit come from? Why do you feel like that? And now, do you Why hear you Larry, um, as we start to close out, do you hear Larry tell his son that he loves him a lot? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I think it's more. Is Larry your roommate? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But I think it's, um, 
with today with the whole mental illness, you know, that's come out more and people communicate more and people go to therapy more. I think the whole, the stigmatism, is that the word? Of men showing love is gone. Like men are able to love today. Men are able to express their love today. So I asked if Larry's like that because with Larry doing that and you seeing that Dodgers won. Um, when you had your kids, you were older and it wasn't like that, right? Because I remember when I had Loran and she was like four or something. My grandpa told me, hug her. I was like, I do hug her. He goes, no, hug her now. And I, was I like, always did with my kids when they were, I always because my mom's side did that all the time. Uh, and I liked that. So it was like, oh, where are you going to go on Christmas? I'm going to go with my dad's side that's not affectionate at all and don't yeah. tell you nothing. Or moms are like, come here, give yeah. me a hug. I got yeah. this freaking cupcakes for you, whatever it is. Like, yeah. oh, I'm going there. Like, yeah. it's this nice, loving, you know, atmosphere. Yeah. Like, where are you going to go, you know? So, I mean, of course, I appreciate it. So, I mean, I, I did that with my kids, you know? Yeah. But. Well, that's – sorry. I'm watching the Dodger game. I'm listening to you. You said it's over. It is over, but I was watching the last replay. <laughs> you can watch the, what do they call it? Um, when the you watch highlights. The, the highlights. Like, you can watch yeah. that later. <laughs> we won. Now she's in a full service studio, right? So you get to watch. I know. You Solomon, you're so awesome. You're so awesome. Thank you. You don't know how much we appreciate you. I'm happy to do it. We appreciate you, and she appreciates that you put the game on for her. I, That's while right. we're, I really, really do. What I want to say is when this airs, it's going to be on Halloween, Halloween. day. Oh, mm -hmm. um, but I want to say is everybody be careful when you take your kids out, whether you're going to a family party, a friend's party, or trick-or-treating. It's getting worse. And I don't mean just in little old San Pedro. I'm saying everywhere. Like, you have to watch your children. Like, for, they just tried to kidnap that 11-year-old girl in Wilmington the other day in broad daylight. Well, just imagine if you're out, you know, you got a costume on, you have a mm -hmm. mask on. It's easy to snatch mm -hmm. somebody to commit a crime during that time because you already have a disguise on, you know? Yes. So you got to watch that day for oh, sure. You, you do. Know? Like, I don't like Halloween. Trina's like, no, ma'am, I don't do it. <laughs> but, That's why more people are doing the trunk or treats now. Yeah, yeah, those were cool. I saw those over. My brother did one. They they did like oldies, like the old school cars. Oh. And my brother uh, posted his up. It was pretty cool. I saw that. I like that. Wait, but when you have your trunk open, doesn't that drain your battery? No. Oh. The car's off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are some that have the light, a light, a trunk. Oh, light. did you mean with yeah. the lights on? Yeah. Oh, um, no, I think where my brother was, there was lights out. Like they were, they were at a place. At like mm -hmm. <laughs> and anybody with a show car probably has a generator anyway. So. They ha they were out like, um, like they were in a place where there was outside. <laughs> She's rolling her eyelashes at me. Oh. There was like outside lights and stuff. So their trunks were just open and. I don't know. Now I'm going to go look and see. Now I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'm the one that doesn't know. But I just, just be very, very careful. Like I don't, we don't, aren't taking Emery to trick or treat or anything. So we're not worried about that. In the last few years, I've just sat home and passed out candy. We don't get too many people, but please just be very careful. Keep your kids with you. Um, I have a quick update on the genie. And it's crazier and scarier than we could ever imagine. And we just really need to pray for her entire family that's kind of go just getting pulled through all of this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they believe she was sold and she's in Oklahoma. And Annie has proof that she was sold and she's in Oklahoma. And this man called her. The man the that... Julian, uh, the Perez boyfriend? Guy, Jonathan Perez guy. Sorry, Jonathan Perez guy. Yeah, called her. And just kind of you know, yelled, screamed, said his piece, even said, like, I'm going to get a lawyer for, uh, what is it when slander. you, yeah, slander, but what is it called when you mess up their character? Defamation of character. Defamation of character for telling people that I hit her. And, and Annie was like, we literally have cop reports. Like, what are you talking about? So it's not sounding too good with, you know, where she's at and what's going on. And Annie herself jumped on a plane and started banging on doors and talking to people. and so, In Oklahoma? Yes, looking for her daughter. Like, this woman is not going. And I, I wouldn't either, so I'm, my hats are off to her. Like, I was worried about her when she told me. I was like, you can't just, like, go in the middle of the ghetto in Oklahoma behind gas stations and 
you know, behind hotel rooms and the sex trafficking that she's discovering as she's doing all this is beyond disgusting, is beyond what we could even imagine. So protect your children, watch them. And I'm sorry, don't just let them spend the night at strangers' houses. If you have a step parent in the house, I hope you trust that step parent with everything you have because just all the stories that we've heard along the way just protect our kids, basically. So now she's in Oklahoma. We're going to post about it, and she's going back to go keep looking for her. And it's it's really sad. And she, I, I want her to be, to give me, like, she's told me everything, but I don't know how much she actually wants me to tell because yeah. we don't want them to know what we know, you know. Yeah. So we just have to pray for them for sure. Um, but thank you, guys. Solomon, thank you. We are on. Oh, Solomon, I totally learned how to use the shorts on YouTube. I've been I posted. noticed. And don't forget to check your boobies. Oh, it's October. Check your boobies after you subscribe. <laughs> yes. it's subscribe uh, first, then check it your is, boobies. Um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we have to make sure that all you women, you should, I think if you're, over, is, they've changed it now. It wasn't even younger. It's like 45 or something. You get a mammogram. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how it comes back, sometimes you have to come back in a year, sometimes not for three years. Mm. But it's very important to check as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Subscribe, YouTube, um, TikTok, and Instagram. And until next time, bye.